us. Uh, welcome to our session today. I am instructor CPA Aringo Frederick. I remember there's a time my friend once said that uh, being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of age. But being a gentleman is a matter of choice. Today's session, I believe all of us, we chose to do accounts because of what we really love. And as I've always mentioned that, we should always approach these accounts with a practical mind, not only for the purpose of doing exams. So today's session is just a continuation of what we've been doing. Remember, in our last class, we had introduced the partnership, and in that case, we looked at each and every concept in relation to that. Today's class is a sum up of what we've been doing. And I want us to handle a past paper question from April 2021. April uh, 2022, actually, not 2021. April 2022, question number three. Last sitting paper, April 2022, question number three. And this question, ideally, will enable us to understand the whole concept of partnership. So I'm going to share the question on our screen. And kindly, you can go through the paper, April 22, question number three. That was uh, ATD. Remember, the concept of ATD, two, is just the same, same concept as the one in uh, CPA, in foundation level. So this is our question, and uh, these are what you are told, that uh, Lily, Amanda, and Ken are in partnership sharing profit and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1. The following is their trial balance as a 31st December 2021. I'm given uh, land and uh, buildings. We have uh, plant and equipment. I'm having uh, accumulated depreciation that is as at uh, 1st January 2021. You're told accounts receivable and uh, accounting accounts payable Bank balance, I'm having inventory, we're having purchase and sales, distribution cost, insurance, finance cost, admin expenses, salaries and wages, bad debts, bank, loan, capital, accounts, as well as current accounts. Come to additional information, uh, these are what you're told, that uh, inventory as a 31st December 2021 was value at $148 uh, million for 20. Land and buildings were acquired a few years ago. The buildings were valued at 420000 So that is to say, of our total land and buildings here of 1020, I'm having this figure, which is 420 relating to buildings. So, of course, the balance would give us for uh, land. So three, depreciation is to be charged per annum as follows where I'm having assets for buildings and plant and machinery as well. Note 4, we are told that no entries have been made in the books for, uh, for sales on credit amounting to $6 million. On 20th December 2021, payment for the goods was received on uh, 3rd January 2022. Remember the concept of accrual? We had looked at it in the previous classes. Regardless of when you are going to pay for the same, I need to account for this transaction in the year of occurrence, which was uh, 2021. So this uh, transaction was not recorded anywhere else. So that is to say, I'll have to record it. And therefore, we are going to debit our debtor's account as well as we credit our sales account. So in addition to our sales, the one that was given here, in addition to our sales, the one that I was given, allowed to add this amount, which was not recorded for credit sales. So that's how we are going to treat that one. Note five, we are told that uh, the partners agreed to the following. Lily is to be paid a salary of five million per month. Interest on drawings to be charged as follows. Lily, 1.8, and Amanda, 1.2. Then I'm also told that a statement of uh, we need to prepare now a required statement of uh, profit or loss and appropriation account for the year ended at 1st December 2021, as well as the partner's current account. And uh, of course, we also require to prepare the statement of financial position as well. 
So given such a question, where are we going to start from? Given such a question, we need to ask ourselves, where are we going to start from? That question was a kind of uh, quite easy because we didn't have a lot of complication in relation to the same. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, to ask ourselves if we can clearly recall the format of our income statement because that is where our task will be. So we need to prepare a statement of profit and loss account. So therefore, let us prepare that. The first thing that uh, we need to do is to prepare the statement. Uh, I should be having the title and the name of this firm, in this case you're told, the name of this partnership. I'm told we're having uh, Lily, Amanda, and Ken. So I'll be having Lily, Amanda, and uh, Ken income statement for the year ended income uh, statement income statement for the year ended income statement for the year ended uh, I'm given there 31st December I'm given income statement for the end of 31st December 2021 so 31st December 2021. So always the title is always uh, very important and the first thing that we must tend to prepare. So having that case, we need to identify the figures that are given, believing that by now we still recall the format. So we're going to start with, of course, our sales and recall we must indicate the currency. We must indicate the currency we must indicate the currency. So I'm having our sales. And for sales, what was reported? Sales, the figure that was reported, if you can look at our child balance on top, where I'm having the figure where I was at all, we're having purchases and sales. Recall, sales will always be on the credit side. Sales will always be on the credit side. So therefore, I'm having here our sales. That is whatever that I was given, 720,222. Yeah. Go to note number, go to note number, uh, go to note, that is uh, note number four. We are told that no entries have been made in the books for sales on credit amounting to 6 million. So therefore, I love to record the sales that were not recorded. So I need to incorporate our sales of 6 million. So that is to say, my total sales, I should be having a figure of how much? My total sales, I should be having a figure of 720,222 plus 6,000. That should give me a total sales of 726,000. I'm having 726,222. That would be our sales. Identify if we had any return inwards. Identify if we had any return inwards. In this question, we didn't have any return inwards, right? So therefore, I'm going to have our cost of sales. So we need to uh, cater for cost of sales. And I believe that by now, we still do recall how to work it out, the format. I need to start with our opening inventory. So therefore, I'm having opening inventory talk of our opening inventory were we given our opening inventory many a times opening inventory will be given in your in your trial balance so just go in your tb and identify if you're having any opening inventory and the opening inventory in our trial balance i can clearly see just below a uh, bank balance i'm having inventory as at first january 2021 i'm given a figure of 125,480, right? So I'm having 125,480. Talk about our purchases. Having our purchases. Our purchases, we were given a figure of format being our purchases. Purchases and sales. So I'm given purchases 420,000. 420,000 being our purchases. Recall that if at all we'll be having any item that you tend to affect our purchases, like carriage inwards, we're going to add 
return outwards you're going to deduct the question is in our question do you have such items mm -hmm. we didn't have such items so therefore i'll proceed straight to our closing inventory and in our case the closing inventory many a times so what you should have in mind is that a closing inventory you will not be given in your travel balance but instead closing inventory will always be given in your additional information most of the cases so therefore proceed to additional information and identify if we are given any closing inventory if you can check note one we are told that inventory as at 31st december 2021 was valued at 148 420 so therefore the examiner here has given us what our closing uh, the examiner here has given us a closing inventory where i'm given a figure of 148 for 20 uh, 148 uh, 420 thousand remember our figures are in thousands that's why you should also be very careful with what you are taking so up to that point we can now determine our cost of sales and our cost of sales in this case we should be having a figure format 125 480 we add 420,000, we deduct 148, 420, to give us a figure of 397,060. Molimu is getting uh, 545, 480, that is uh, after deducting that, I'm getting a figure of 397,060. So kindly you can confirm. So I'm having uh, 397,060, that is what you should be having. So here, confidently, I'm having 397.060. So that is to say, having that, I can clearly come and have our gross profit. Basically, gross profit is uh, sales minus cost of sales. So therefore, my gross profit here, our gross profit, confidently, we can come and have the difference, which should give us a figure for much. I'm having now our sales, which is 726, triple two, minus answer, I'm getting a figure of 329,162. That is the gross profit that I am getting. Believe me that you're getting the same. Now, once we're done with that case, we proceed to our, we proceed to our, of course, expenses. But before expenses, these are the main items that you should always be uh, able to kind of identify. Number one, identify if you're having any income, like discount received. Did you have any discount received? Identify if you're having any gain on disposal of fixed assets. Do you have these items? Identify, again, if at all you're having provision for doubtful debts. And we should be having a decrease in provision for doubtful debts if you're having a decrease in provision for doubtful debts this is a figure that you're supposed to do what to take as part of your income but if you don't have either of this item you proceed directly to what to our expenses so of the three items that we said discount received gain on disposal of fixed asset or decrease in provision for doubtful debts do we have any of these items? That's a question that you should ask yourself and identify if you have. So if we don't have, we just proceed straight to our expenses, which in this case, we didn't have such items. So proceed straight to our expenses. And one thing that you must always tend to have at the back of your mind is that anytime you're handling expenses, the best advice that Molimu can give you is always start with your additional information because this is what will give you a guide it will enable you to be very very accurate with whatever that you're doing so we go straight to additional information and to start identify the expenses that we had like the first uh, uh, note that was inventory note two i'm told land and buildings were acquired a few years ago the buildings were valued at four hundred and twenty thousand. Note three, that we are told that depreciation is to be charged per annum as follows. So confidently, I can come and identify our depreciation here. Let us compute our depreciation. And for depreciation, we start by the one for buildings. 
So we start with buildings, depreciation. How much should we be having? Look at that case, note two. We are told that the buildings costed a figure of how much? 420,000. That was the cost of the building. And how are we providing our depreciation? We are told that, note three, that the buildings are provided for at a depreciation rate of 2.5% per annum on cost. On cost. So therefore, I'm having 2.5%. That is on cost. That should give us a figure of how much, my good students. I'm having a figure of 420,000 times 0 0.025. So in that case, clearly, I can see on my side, I'm getting 10,500. That is uh, to say, we've uh, taken uh, 420,000 times 2.5%. 2 I'm getting 10,500. Okay. What about the next item? The next item here I'm having, uh, we've talked of for the buildings. The next item here, I'm having plant and equipment. So talk of our plant and equipment. Plant and equipment. What were we told for plant and equipment? Plant and equipment, you are told that I am providing depreciation at the rate of 15% per annum on reducing balance basis. If you can recall what we studied about reducing balance basis, meaning that I need to provide depreciation on the book value. And how will you determine our net book value? To determine our net book value, simply we take our cost minus accumulated depreciation. That is how we can achieve our net book value. So in our case, do we have the cost of plant and equipment? And if so, were we given any accumulated depreciation relating to this item? That's a question that you should ask yourself. So come to our question. In our asset, the first item I'm having landed buildings, plant and equipment. Plant and equipment cost. Plant and equipment cost. I'm given a figure of how much there. I'm given a figure of 8,400. That was the cost. What about accumulated depreciation? Uh, that is uh, that is 16,400, sorry. I'm given 16,400. I'm given 16,400. What about accumulated depreciation? The accumulated depreciation is the one I'm given 8,400. So accumulated depreciation, I'm given 8,400. So that as at the end of the day, what will we be having as our net book value here? My net book value, I should be talking of 16,400. I should be talking of 16,400 minus 8,400 to give me a cost of 8,000, to give us a cost or rather net book value of 8,000. Now, to determine the depreciation, it is on this 8,000 that I am required to determine our depreciation, which will be how much? 8,000. We multiply by the depreciation rate that I was given there at the rate of 15%. So I'm having 1,200. On my side, I am getting a figure of 1,200. So basically, that is how we can determine our depreciations. That's how we can determine our depreciations. So we are done with note 3. Come to note 4. We have already uh, taken that figure. We've added it to ourselves. Recall, we'll also add the same figure in our, in our receivables. Come to note five, the partners agreed to the following. So basically, these are items that will tend to affect our, these are items that will tend to affect our uh, appropriation account. So after that case, now we go back to our trial balance and identify the expenses that we were given. So therefore, we go to our trial balance and identify other expenses that I was given. Now our task will just be a matter of copying and pasting. So, starting with land and buildings, plant and equipment, I'm having accumulated depreciation accounts, receivable bank balance, inventory, purchase and sales, I'm having distribution cost. So, the first expense to consider in our trial balance, I'm having uh, distribution, I'm having distribution cost. Distribution cost, you can clearly see I was given a figure for much, 68.20. I'm having insurance. For insurance, I was given a figure of how much? 
insurance i was given a figure of 1240 uh-huh the other item here i'm given a finance cost finance cost i'm having a finance cost here uh finance cost finance cost i'm given a figure format i'm given a figure of how much finance cost i'm given a figure of uh 7800 7800 7800 uh -huh. talk about uh admin cost admin cost i'm given 9520 admin cost remember we're just following the details in our tb admin cost i'm given 9520 uh-huh the other expense here i'm given uh salaries and wages and the question that we should ask ourselves is on the salaries and wages was it inclusive of the partnership salaries because if it was inclusive of the partnership salaries we were supposed or rather we'd be required to do or to deduct but in this case we weren't told if it was inclusive so therefore i'm having uh salaries and wages here uh salaries and uh, wages where in this case i'm given a figure for much for salaries and wages 115 618 115 618 after that point we proceed to uh bad debts so i'm given our bad debts uh bad debts bad debts clearly here i can see i'm given a figure for much 464. Mm -hmm. any other expense that i'm given capital accounts that won't affect us here current accounts drawings won't affect us at this point so therefore we can't determine our total expenses here so that as at the end of the day we will determine our net profit so my total expense we take our car come having nine ten five hundred plus uh, twelve hundred plus uh, sixty eight twenty plus twelve forty plus seven thousand eight hundred plus 9520 plus 115 618 plus 464 in that case i can clearly see that my total expense i'm having 153 162 that is the total expense that i'm getting so confidently confidently i can determine our net profit so our net profit will be how much here i should be having our net profit at this point so i'll just come and have my net profit our net profit a figure of how much a figure of 329 162 minus answer i'm having 176,000 being our net profit being our net profit so at this point what we've done we've all prepared our trading account and our profit and loss account remember the question also wanted us to prepare appropriation account and any time you're dealing with partnership always recall that you must prepare appropriation account even if you are not asked to do uh, that you just have to prepare your appropriation account anytime you are handling partnership accounts so confidently we can proceed and prepare our preparation account. Remember, preparation account basically is just a summary of whatever had taken place maybe in our agreement. Remember, we talked of the partnership deed. So all what we had agreed is what I'm going to uh, consider it in our in our appropriation account. And therefore, that should take us to our appropriation account, whereby I'm going to have it on this other side. So allow me to squeeze this question there so we use the same same data to prepare our appropriation account here so having our appropriation account i'll just be having this detail here appropriation account appropriation account appropriation account i'll have the details there appropriation account where in this case uh just a moment here so this is a summary of whatever that we had agreed this is a summary of whatever that we had agreed so just a moment here we do that right now
so it's a matter of choice for us to understand this concept right so long as uh, we are not doing it just for the purpose of exams we will be in a very very good position we will be in a very very good position so having that case uh, our appropriation account uh, we should be having it at this point so we start by identifying the following items number one drawings number two uh, that is uh, not drawings but interest on drawings number two interest on capital number three salaries attributable to our partners these are the items that we need to do what we need to identify so uh, mentioning that case uh, we need to start by that so therefore I'm having we are having here our interest on drawings that's the question that you need to ask yourself if at all we are given interest on drawings do we have any interest on drawings in our case uh-huh go to note number go to note number that is a uh, note number five note five we are told the partners agreed the following to the following Lily is to be paid a salary of uh, five million interest on drawings to be charged as follows Lily 1.8 and Amanda 1.2. So confidently, I can have Lily here and Amanda. So I'm having Lily. And we do have what? Amanda. Interest on drawings. A figure of how much? We are told that Lily had a figure of 1.8. So I'll just be having 1.8 here. And Amanda, 1.2. So that was the interest on drawings. Remember interest on drawings, we are going to add it back. We are going to add. So therefore, I'm having 1,800 plus 1,200. That should give us a figure of 3,000 being interest on drawings. So confidently, I can come and have here our 3,000. Then consider if we had any interest on uh, capital. So talk of interest on capital. Talk of interest on capital. The same individuals, I'm having uh, Lily, I'm having uh, Lily, we have Amanda, and uh, the third partner uh, was who? The third partner here was Ken. So how will we determine our interest on capital? Are we given the rate for interest on capital? That's the question that we should ask ourselves. So in note number five, we are told that, to allow interest on capital account balance at 5% per annum. So therefore, Lily, 5% of the capital contributed, which will be how much? 5% of the capital contributed here for Lily. Uh, cap uh, Lily had 400,000, so I'm having 400,000. Uh, remember our figures, are in, uh, our figures here are in 1,000, uh, so I'm having the 400,000. So we'll be talking of 400,000. That is a 5%. Then Amanda, I'm having 5% of capital contributed, which was how much? 350,000. Ken. Ken, you had a figure of how much? 200,000. 5% of uh, 200,000. So that is to say what will be our interest on capital here. I'm going to have, of course, 5%, 0.05 times 400,000. So the first one I'm getting 20,000. 5% 5 times 350,000. I'm getting 17,500. Whereas the other one I'm getting 5% 5 times 200,000. <coughs> Excuse, I'm getting 10,500. Uh, 10,000, sorry, so that the total, if I was uh, to sum up the total, plus 17,500, plus 20,000, that should give me a figure of 47,500, 47,500. Remember that is interest on capital, which you'll have to deduct. Then proceed to the next item, which in this case, the other item to consider in our appropriation account you know very well is what is uh salaries to the partners 
the big question that you should ask yourself is in our partnership do we have anyone who's earning a salary so i'm having salaries to partners so i'm having our salaries to partners salary we are told in uh, note number five that i'm having this individual who's earning a salary Lily is to be paid five uh, a salary of five thousand per month. So I'm having Lily. Lily is the one who will be earning a salary of five thousand per month, and in this case, five million per month. And our figures remember are in thousands. So what we told when the partnership began, in this case, we're told for the whole year, right? So assumption is that you're going to take for the whole year. So five thousand by twelve, five thousand by twelve. That should give us a figure of how much. 5,000 by 12 should give me a figure of 60,000. 60,000. So once we have that, my good students will find that we'll be in a very, very good position because now we have everything in place. Now we have everything in place. So what I am required to do here is to determine the profit to be shared. Because as we are operating our partnership business, always remember that it is out of the profit that we generated that I'll have to pay our salaries, that I'll have to pay our interest on our capital, that I'll have to pay our commission from the profit that we have generated. So that's why we're having an appropriation account. So in this case, what will be the profit that you're going to share? The balance that I'm going to have after we paid for all this is what you're going to share. So profit to be shared how much will we be having as the profit to be shared? Profit to be shared, I should be taking the net profit that we are determined here, 176,000. I incorporate or I adjust it with all these elements, which will include, so I'm having 176,000. We add interest on drawings of 3,000. We less interest on capital, 47,500. Recall the one that you are determining here. Then you less our aspect of our salary, which is 60,000. So confidently, at that point, that should give us a profit to be shared of 71,500. 71,500. Then after that, we proceed to profit shared, or rather share of profit. I need to share now that profit. Share of profit. So I need to share our profit. I need to share our profit. And how will we share our profit? Of course, based on our profit sharing ratio. So we proceed to share profit. The partners, we're having these partners. I'm having these partners, of course. I'm having these partners, which in this case, I'm having the first person, Alikuwa Naitwanani, Lily, Amanda, and who can lack, 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 lack enterprise, lack enterprise, can Amanda and Lily. What was their profit sharing ratio? Their profit sharing ratio, of course, will always be given. A profit sharing ratio will always be given. If you can check in our statement here when we started, we are told that Lily, Amanda, and Ken are in partnership sharing profit and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1. So therefore, having that case, I'm going to have Lily, 2 of 5, Amanda, 2 of 5, Ken, 1 of 5, times our profit, which is 71,500, 71,500, and 71,500. So therefore, Having mentioning that, we can now confidently determine what each person earned 205 times 71,500. I'm having 28,600, which would be the same here, 28,600. And uh, finally, this other individual, Ken, 1 over 5 times 71,500, which would give me 14,300. So that if we add all this, plus 28,600, plus 28,600, that will give us that figure there, 71,500. So this is what we've shared. So that as at the end of the day, in my statement, appropriation account, I should be having a nil figure there.
I should be having a nil figure to that point. So you'll find that uh, that is how we are supposed to prepare our income statement. And so long as you've mastered each step that Modimo had shared with us, it will always be very easy and simple for us. So in our next session, I'll want us to handle the current account and we proceed to look at our statement of financial position. You'll find that it will be very, very easy on our side. So to that point, guys, thank you so much. And let us meet in our next session. Thank you. Thank you.